Once upon a time, there lived some incredibly cool toads, and they had a superpower that allowed them to survive the age of the dinosaurs. What did they look like? What was the life cycle like? And what was their superpower? Let's take a look. Uh, wait, that's a potato. Well, there are toads that look like potatoes with noses. Truly ancient living fossils. Not because you are have to dig them up, but because they never went extinct and never really changed. I first heard about these creatures from an amphibian enthusiast whose animals you will see in this video. He loved these bizarre subterranean beings and kept them, even though most of the time all he could see was the tip of a nose sticking out of a burrow. And I get it, they are incredibly weird! So, who exactly is Rhinophrenus dorsalis? It's the sole surviving member of its entire family, Rhinophronidae. <laughs> they have barely changed since the Jurassic. They look just like they did before the dinosaurs died out. This isn't just an animal, it's a living memory of Earth. All other frogs and toads have evolved so far away from this lineage that they not share less with Rhinophrenus than we humans do with whales, kangaroos or bats. They live fossorial lives, almost entirely underground. They hardly move, they barely seen, almost eternal. For just a couple of days a year, during tropical storms, they emerge to breed and to continue their prehistoric life. And when they do, they inflate like little balloons and produce sounds that feel otherworldly, like echoes from other dimension. The female responds to the male's call almost instantly. They enter amplexes, the oldest physical embers on Earth and float around the water like uh, inflated blobs. You can't believe your eyes, the color, the rarity, everything about it feels unreal. The others lingered nearby, uh, sometimes trying to join in, um, sometimes just watching. One of the males is missing an eye. Where and how did he lose it? Nobody knows. He's been underground all year. Night falls, then day, then another. Still no eggs. The rain ends. Amplexus breaks. Was it all for nothing? Oh, is it safe for them? Is it comfortable? They're creatures of the earth. Oh my God. Water isn't home. It's an emergency zone, a brief exception. Do they need to be returned to the terrarium? Or maybe. Last try, the rain comes back on. And then the second female joins, new amplexus. Oh, yes. One day, two, stressful, and then tiny transparent eggs scatter it like stardust. A long awaited clutch, finally. Just like it's been for millions of years, a new cycle begins. The eggs begin developing within hours. Speed is astonishing. Within a day, the walls of the tank are lined with tiny larvae. Another day, and they're swimming tadpoles very early, very fast. And here comes the big question. What do they eat? No one really knows. Successful breedings are rare. There is no reliable guide. Tadpoles across the amphibian world are wildly different. Some eat fish flakes or tadpole granules. Some need a live prey. Others must graze on algae or scrape surfaces or take dust from the water surface. And if you don't figure it out in time, their lives come to the end fast. Then a break thought. By their shape, behavior, swimming pattern, obviously, they resemble pipit tadpoles. And pipits are filter feeders. They filter suspended particles through their mouth, so they need a cloud of nutrition suspended like mist. So, ultra fine fish fry powder dissolved in water, and finally, they eat, they live, they grow quickly. Metamorphosis in Mexican borrowing toads, Rhinophrenus dorsalis is lightning fast. Within a week, rare limbs appear. In two and a half weeks, front limbs erupt. Then begins the transformation. They stop eating. Internal evolution begins. A shift from fish to toad. 
when they leave the water, they are no longer aquatic. They sit on top surfaces. For just a moment can see the world. Then the tail disappears. And here they are. Little potatoes, tiny borrowers, returning to the life they were built for. As nature shows, this was a winning strategy, tested by millions of years. In captivity, though, another challenge – they now need food even smaller than the adults. Keeping these guys is a challenge for any amphibian keeper, because most of the time you will see nothing. But there is always a way if you look close enough. They need a terrarium with plenty of ground space, deep, loose substrate, at least 8 inches of soil plus sand or coconut plus sand, a small basking spot with UVB in a dry corner, a gradient of temperature from 75 to 88 degrees, and most importantly, a gradient of humidity. We don't really know what exactly humidity they need, so we simulate late the wild, moistening one corner daily and letting the rest vary, so the toad can choose its own comfort zone. A water bowl? Pointless, they won't use it. Feeding? Live insects, tiny ones, drosophila fruit flies, pinhead crickets, dusted with calcium and vitamins for sure. Sometimes you won't see them for weeks, not even their noses. The only sign, if the food disappears, you did it right. And for special miracle during winter, reduce watering and let them rest in a bit more dry and cold conditions. Be careful! In spring, flood the substrate fully and you may hear the ancient call. That's the queue, time for the rain chamber. Successful captive breeding of these guys can be counted on one hand. This story is real miracle. Ancient magic is always near for those who knows how to see it. More rare amphibian wonders in my very next video.